Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Joni Young, if you're new here, and I'm so glad you guys are all here to join me for this painting tutorial today. This is a full length step-by-step -step in acrylic. I'm working on a 12 by 16 pre-painted canvas that I just covered up with some gray. I used a little bit of black and white. You can use any shade of gray you want. You can paint your canvas black, or you can also paint this on just a white, regular white canvas. So I've got the following colors that I'm going to be using. I'll also have a full list of them down below in the description of this video. Titanium white, neon pink, and neon lemon yellow. I'll also be using cobalt blue hue and Mars black, both by Liquitex Basic. And here they are, the Mars black and the cobalt blue hue. I'm going to make lighter shades of the blue using a little bit of white. So I'm going to start this landscape working on uh, the, the sky first and then we're going to build up to the mountains in the distance and then ultimately uh, the final mountain hillside here in the foreground. So I'm going to be using a filbert brush for the background. I've got my number 30 filbert brush here and I just want to take a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to use some white and some pink. So I'm just going to go across the sky. Just pulling softly back and forth. Using a little bit of water as well. And I want it to be very uneven. That way I get a lot of streaks and different tones of this pink going on that will help to create different tones of blue and a light peachy color when I come over top with some yellow. I'm going to be a little bit more generous with my neon pink at the top here. Now I'm going to take, without washing my brush off, some yellow, <clears throat> excuse me, some yellow, some white, and like I mentioned, a little bit of that pink left in there. And I'm going to start pulling and blending it over partially on that pink. Going to add a little bit more white right here where we're going to have our sun. And blend that in with a little bit more yellow. Careful not to press over and over blend, otherwise, it's just going to um, get lost in the gray background. And then I'm going to come right below with pink and yellow. And you can really play around with your skies and and be a little bit more generous with one color or the other if you want. I've got titanium white here that I'm using and I'm going to take a little scoop of this so I can mix this in with my cobalt blue to make a lighter shade. Which will give me a very similar shade to this one, light blue violet. Now I would just go ahead and use this, however I want to have some deeper shades so that's why I'm using the cobalt blue and then just softening it with this white. Okay, so here we go right here and I've got a number 9 filbert brush. So I was originally using a number 30 and I'm going to take a bit of that cobalt blue, mix it in with some of the white. It will dry darker. And I'm going to start 
just coming in and overlapping. This is gonna pick up some of that wet pink paint and make some really pretty purple shades. We're just gonna block in these clouds. We're not gonna try too hard to make them look perfect. Painting clouds is probably the toughest thing for beginner painters. Like I just say, do less, less brush strokes, more about color and placement is what you wanna think about. I've got a cloud tutorial that it breaks it down. It's really, really simple. Three basic steps for um, some 3D looking clouds that will give you um, just those steps to make it a lot easier for you to be able to paint clouds and, and add them and incorporate them into your landscapes. Because I know a lot of people kind of shy away from landscapes with clouds because they're afraid. I know over the years of teaching, my students have always had the biggest issues with clouds. So I'm just kind of overlapping in some areas and I'm gradually going to start to make some of these clouds smaller. That way we get perspective so it looks like there's some farther away. And that's why I like to use a little filbert brush because I can make my clouds look kind of puffy. I can really have control over the size so when I get down here to paint these smaller ones I can just use let off pressure let off the pressure I'm using and just use the tip of my brush now when we come in down lower here where I have more yellow we're gonna get green and that'll look really pretty too so there's some uh, major benefits of painting wet on wet. So just going straight over your wet paint, kind of like you would with oil painting. Um, I know a lot of people have trouble keeping up with the drying aspect of acrylics. Now I've got a few tips for you um, for that. And I'm just, all I'm doing here is coming over with a little bit of white softening and making these clouds have a little bit more dimension to them. So we've got some lighter areas and then some shadows. Um, so I've got a few tips for you guys. I usually mention these throughout my videos to keep your acrylics from drying out too quickly. Uh, the first one is don't paint in a really hot, dry environment. Um, turn down your temperature in your room, your workspace, Make it a little bit cooler. Obviously, you don't want to be uncomfortable. You don't want to be cold. Um, you don't have to have your studio cold. Um, and you can also have a fine missing spray bottle where you just kind of just stand back about a foot away from your canvas and just mist. So you don't want like a regular spray bottle that will shoot out too many drops of water. You want it to be a really, really fine mist that will keep your uh, painting from dripping, but just keep it moist enough that it's keeping your uh, paint and you can do the same thing with your palette too you can fine mist your palette and of course there are mediums out there that you can add slow drying mediums to your acrylics uh, however be aware that it is going to make your acrylics act like oil so it'll take a lot longer for them to dry which can be frustrating too you just want that happy medium and that's why I only use water I feel like I have more control by just using the right amount of water. And that comes with practice and time and experience. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set in, dry, come back to it later, tweak it with a little bit of color, light and shadow if needed. And I'm gonna start coming in with uh, the second layer in this painting, which are the, the mountain range in the distance um, that still has all the beautiful glaciers and snow on it. Really reminds me of the beautiful Rocky Mountains that I grew up around. And I'm just going to continue using this brush. I might switch over to a flat brush, but I'll let you guys know exactly what brushes I'm using and when I'm changing them as we go along. I'm going to take black first. 
I know this is crazy. I never really use black, but once in a while I like to use black, um, especially for something that I want to have a lot of contrast in. So that's what black will really do is help create a lot of contrast. Um, so I'm just going to come in right about here. So about two, two and a half inches from the top right corner. And I'm just gonna start kind of patching, wiggling in, skipping areas. And this is gonna be the rocks that aren't covered in snow, obviously, the exposed rocks here. So again, don't think about painting rocks. All you're doing is adding little blobs and dabs of black and wiggling with your brush little dabs, wiggles, and dots. I'm telling you guys, that is how you're gonna get through paintings that might intimidate you. Making it simple, just simplify it for yourselves. So right in here, I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. Without washing my brush off, I'm gonna take some blue. I've hardly got any black left in there. And I'm just gonna catch the bottom part of where I let off on the, on the black here, where it ends and starts with the next layer of mountain or hillside, hillside of a mountain, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of black or blue in with my black here. Not completely covering all the black. So I'm just adding it, enhancing it with a little bit more color. I'm gonna take some white now. Add it right in here. And then create a little circle like this around just to give it more of a glow. I'm gonna be taking more of my yellow, a little bit of white. So why I like to add a little bit of white is it breaks the transparency and will prevent this lemon yellow from drying and taking on a green um, hue to it or temperature to it, like a cool. And uh, But I really, really love this color and I encourage you guys to find any lemon yellow. It can be uh, a cadmium, it doesn't have to be neon, um, but this is really gonna make a difference in this painting, it adds that pop of color. So see the difference over the white and mixed with a little bit of white? It just glows a little bit more, doesn't it? And some more pink. So painting wet on wet has its benefits. But painting wet on dry also has its benefits. So I like to use a little bit of both uh, techniques in my paintings. And that's why I enjoy painting with acrylic. Okay, so you can see just how beautiful this looks. Overlapping the pink with a little bit of that yellow makes a gorgeous neon orange color. So you can just come around and add a little bit more here and there. Saturate, add more color, then change your pink up a little bit by taking some white. It's nice to have some cool tones of each color and some warmer ones. Come right under here, a little bit more yellow, a little bit of yellow, pink, and white.
Okay, I'm ready to start working on the rest of the mountain now. And I think I'm just gonna continue to use this brush. It's working fine for me, but you guys can use a flat brush. You could use a round brush if you want. Use any brush that you feel comfortable with. Um, there's so many different ways to approach this. So it's not right or wrong. It's just whatever you enjoy using. Okay, so I'm gonna take my white cobalt blue. Mix the two together. And I'm going to start coming in here, slightly over part of the blue. And we're just going to go over and in between part of those black rocky areas. Remember that the black is really going to show through when it's dry. And we can always come back in for the tip of, or the top of the mountain, the tip of the mountain, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm going to use more of um, my cobalt blue and less white, and I'm going to come right under that sun, right up here, Okay, look at that. Isn't that amazing with just a few simple instructions, colors. I mean, this is for any skill level. If you're just a beginner, I teach my beginner students this. You can do it. Don't think that if you're just starting out, you have to, um, you know, paint, do a paint by number type of painting. You don't. I surprise my students with what they can accomplish. I like to show you guys what you're capable of because you don't really know until you're shown and you can do a lot more than you think you're capable of. I love bringing that out in people and helping you discover that. Okay, so just come in wherever you want with a little bit more soft peaks building up with a little bit more white and I like to kind of just push and pull and wiggle to get that brush shape back and it also helps to release some paint so a little bit more blue here now if you want you could also use purple that would be really beautiful and complimentary um, this is one of my favorite color combinations though And I'm just gonna come in here and add a little bit of what's left on my brush or in my brush. Work this out. Just down here. And adding it diagonally. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is take some white and some pink, a little bit of yellow in there, so I get this really pretty coral color. And I'm gonna go from the top here, right under, maybe even partially over some of that blue. And start pulling down with it. So painting on an angle like this really adds a lot of interesting perspective. I'm gonna 
so much easier than you think. I'm take a little bit more of my cobalt blue and I'm gonna come just around here and add a few little wiggles and squiggles, little lines. Adding a little bit more depth right there. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more black and blue I'm going to dab over where I have already those existing rocks and then maybe just add a few other little ones here and there. So remember little dabs but change up. So turn your brush when you do it so it's not always looking the same. You don't want to have a polka dot looking mountain range back there. Okay, what I'm going to do now is take my black and the rest of my yellow and I'm going to come in down here and go over top of part of that blue making this really kind of beautiful green gold color so black and yellow make a really nice make really nice shades of green. So I say shades because it depends on what black you're using, and it also depends on um, what shade of yellow you're using. Okay, so I'm going to take some more yellow here. See how it's nice having a gray underpainting because you get these little hints of this gray there uh, that's a really nice balance and adds mid-tones and it just makes for a nice backdrop. Gray is what um, art galleries mainly use because um, colors really uh, look nice against gray. I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to take some yellow a little bit of white and I'm going to start coming in adding a little bit more sunlight here in this area and then a little bit more yellow and black And just start coming in with a little path that goes down. With a clean brush, I'm going to take the remainder of my pink, a little bit of yellow in there that makes it that coral color. Also going to go right over the top of the mountain. Gently just kind of pull a few little streaks in here.
gonna add a little bit more shadows to my clouds up here. So I'm gonna be a bit more generous with my blue this time. Still tinting it with a little bit of white. So I'm not going over the entire cloud. I'm just adding some blue inside. Each time I add the blue, I'm adding less and less, leaving those outer layers to get lighter and lighter. Then just a little bit of white, tap, tap, tap. Remember just those little taps and then just little wiggles. This is going to give you those peaks in your clouds and it's going to give your clouds that kind of layered look. I like it when there's clouds over top of clouds and you can see those layers, the thinner layers, more transparent, misty like looking ones, and then some denser ones in between. All right, so I think I want to start adding a fence. And I'm going to use one of my flat brushes. Um, it's a number 10. So I really like to use flat brushes for if I want to have straighter lines and it helps give me a little bit more control. I'm actually going to add a little bit of my neon orange in here so that I can make more of a brown color for my fence. You can use any brown you want, any orange you want. Make your fence whatever color you like. It can be white even if you want. But you're need going to need to have a little bit of a shadow too on one side. So this is going to be our shadow and you're just going to come right in here. Our tallest little fence post. Really changes the atmosphere of the painting, doesn't it? just kind of goes down and off into the mist, disappears into the mist. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more black. So notice how they're going up higher. So when I start the next one, I'm starting it higher. That's how you get it to, to look like that. And to feel like we're walking into this painting, we bring this fence post right down off the canvas. And that gives us that illusion. I'm gonna add just one more. So this one's not like right in the middle. Make this one a little bit taller. Now if the sun's there, then it's gonna make a shadow here. So I'm gonna rinse my brush out most of the paint and just pull off a little line like this, little lines just to create that shadow. And then we're just gonna add a little board right there maybe another one here and it gets thinner and thinner and then just disappears. Okay. It's really important to make sure that it disappears. So most pressure right here to make it wider. And then as they get far away, let off, let off, let off. Same thing here, let off.
I'm going to add a little bit of black from the bottom up. Then I'm going to wash my brush off and I'm going to take some yellow, some orange, and some white and I'll add a little highlight here on the inside. All these little things make such a big difference. So I'm leaving this board that runs across in shadow. I'm just going in between. So down, across, pick the left side of each board for the light and in between each board is where you're going to add your highlights so I'm just going to add a few little lines in here and then have it disappear disappear into the mist. Okay, I'm going to come in with some bushes now. And for that, I've got um, oval, <laughs> oval mop brush, it's one inch. And I'm going to take a little bit of black and my yellow. And I'll add a few little bushes down here. on one side of the path and the fence, and then I'll add some up here that go with a slant of the mountain here. So it comes down, tap, 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 and then on an angle, and then tap down here. All right, I've got some more neon yellow. I'm gonna gradually start adding some light in here. Gentle little baby taps back there because it goes off and disappears. We really want it to disappear like that. Wanna feel the hillside coming down and then some bushes down here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white now because that's gonna prevent my yellow from drying see-through and too dark. So a few little taps, little baby ones. We'll add some light. Off that side. And I'm just gonna sweep in a little bit here where we've got these highlights in between our shadows from our boards. That's how you know where you've got the light coming in. And bring that sunlight right there. 
and a little down the hill. I'm going to drag my brush and pull down so we still feel like that hill is right coming down and then it evens out right here for our path. Okay, I'm going to add a few sun rays and I've got my number 10 flat brush again. I'm going to take a little bit of white and pink. You can add a little bit of yellow there if you want as well. You want to make sure that you have enough water on your brush that you create transparent looking sun rays, but not so much water that your paint is, is dripping. So we're just going to start from the center of that sun and just gently pull and flick softly like that. And I'm just going to add a little bit more white inside to make it brighter. Gently pull off again. I'm not going to add any sun rays going up there. I just want them to be down here. I'm going to take a little bit more of that brown that I made with my black and orange. Mix it in with the sunray color that I've got on my brush, which is mostly white. And I'm going to add a little bit of it along the path. Add a little bit of a dirt there in the path, just a tiny bit like that. I'm just going to take a little bit more blue here. I don't want to have too, too much on my brush, but I want to tie in a little bit of, a little bit more cool shadows in here. I like to add a little bit more color wherever I can. I think it a nice way to add some more interest in the painting. Now we could have a few flowers in here. Um, some flowers that grow wild are daisies, lupin. You can add any flowers that you want. Um, however, I think I'm going to stick with daisies. I think they always are a nice choice. And I've got my number two round brush that I'm going to be using. I've also got the right colors here. So I've got a little bit of um, green that I made with my black and yellow. So I'm just going to add a little center for my daisies. Just a little circle or even a half circle will work. And then I'm just going to take some white. And just start from the outside in. Grab a little bit of water on my brush.
I'm going to start adding more smaller sizes. These ones are kind of big down here because they're more in the foreground. And for a few that have a little bit more definition, I'm going to switch to my size zero filbert brush. This one makes it a little bit more neat and tidy um, looking petals. What I want to do is have a little bit of a shadow on some of these daisies. So I'm going to add some of my light blue here. We could add a few on this side too. And then a yellow center. Okay, well, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and learned a lot. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more and leave a comment or a question if you have them below. I always love hearing from you guys. Have a wonderful day. See you soon in my next video. Bye, everybody.